NASA indefinitely delayed the return flight of two astronauts on Starliner, but it continues to assert that this is not a stranded situation. So we got to ask, is that actually the truth? Indeed, Boeing Starliner is getting worse than we think. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. So on June 5th, the crew flight test CEFT mission of Boeing CST-100 Starliner spacecraft completed its first stage successfully, sending two astronauts to the ISS. However, the return process did not go as smoothly. In a statement on June 18th, NASA said that the event of bringing astronauts back to Earth would occur after the second of the two planned spacewalks at the space station that was scheduled for July 2nd. That spacewalk has since been postponed to late July after a water leak from the suit umbilical line in the airlock just as a June 24 spacewalk was beginning. That spacewalk got scrubbed. This has led to the Starliner's test flight schedule getting extended by at least a month and a half and possibly longer. On the afternoon of June 28th at a press conference, NASA explained that the additional delay is to conduct ground tests on the Starliner's RCS thrusters to try and replicate the conditions that caused the thrusters to malfunction during the approach to the station. These tests, expected to start this week, are going to take a few weeks. Steve Stitch, NASA Commercial Crew Program Manager, noted that these ground tests would also allow for a detailed examination of the thrusters to determine the possible causes of the issue, something that cannot be done with the thrusters in space on the Starliner. These thrusters are located in the spacecraft service module, which is discarded and burns up in the atmosphere, making post-flight study impossible. This will be the real opportunity to examine the thruster just like we had in space on the ground, with detailed inspections, he said. Doing those tests now, rather than after Starliner returns, gives spacecraft controllers the options to do additional thruster tests on Starliner before undocking, and to get as much data out of the spacecraft before it leaves home. We understand these issues for a safe return, said Mark Nappy, Boeing's vice president and commercial crew program manager of the thruster and helium leak problems at the most recent briefing. But we don't understand these issues enough for us to fix them permanently. Officials said there was no rush to bring Starliner with Wilmore and Williams on board back home. There were plenty of supplies on board for the two, along with work for them to do at the station. We had a luxury of time, said Ken Bowersox, NASA's Associate Administrator for Space Operations, said at the briefing. At this point, the spacecraft's technical issues have turned into a scheduling problem. Initially, when Starliner was introduced, the CFT mission was expected to take eight days at the ISS. Although it could be potentially extended by a few days or weeks if necessary, experts at the time said the spacecraft could stay at the station for up to 45 days, based on the battery capabilities in the crew module. However, the return date to Earth has been continuously pushed back each time by four days. This is mainly due to the landing conditions required for Starliner at sites in the southwest U.S. The first four-day delay was to avoid conflict with a previously scheduled spacewalk. Other delays are believed to be related to technical issues with Starliner itself. And due to those prolonged delays, NASA is now reconsidering the 45-day limit previously set for Starliner. In a recent meeting, Mr. Stitch shared that so far the batteries have not shown any signs that would limit performance or add additional risk if the mission extends longer than planned. The risk for the next 45 days is essentially the same as the first 45 days, so we'll go update that limit, he said. But the series of delays in Starliner's return, with now an indefinite return date, have created a narrative that Williams and Wilmore are stuck and stranded in space. To cite two words commonly used in media reports in the last couple of weeks across the world. Stitt said at the start of the June 28th briefing that he wanted to clear up those misunderstandings. I want to make it very clear that Butch and Sunni are not stranded in space. Our plan is to continue to return them on Starliner and return them home at the right time. Got a little bit more work to do for their final return, but they're safe on the space station. Their spacecraft's working well and they're enjoying their time on the space station. Nappy, a little later in the briefing, turned from clearing up misperceptions to airing complaints about media coverage he gets daily about the mission. Every morning I sit and read him, and I tell you, from being a representative of Boeing and a representative of the Starliner program, they're pretty painful to read, he said. We've gotten a really good test flight that's been accomplished so far and being viewed rather negatively. This situation sparked a strong reaction from the press during the meeting. 
They criticized NASA and Boeing for the lack of transparency about the mission and demanded more frequent and detailed updates. Example, NASA primarily posts updates on its blog. However, since June 14th, the initial expected end date of the mission, only three updates have been published. The continuous delays without specific explanations for the causes and the final deadline make the public feel like they're witnessing a moving of the goalposts without an end in sight. This lack of transparency has led to concerns about the safety of the Starliner when returning to Earth. Although officials assert that Starliner could be used to bring Will Moore and Williams back in an emergency, they've been cautious, whether intentionally or inadvertently, about its ability to return under normal conditions. At the end of the meeting, NASA promised to provide more frequent updates on the mission, especially during the thruster inspections. However, they did not make any specific commitments regarding this. There will be time later for more discussions about the long-term future of Starliner. Nappy at Friday's briefing bluntly rejected the suggestion that Boeing would give up on the program after this test flight. The plain and simple answer to the question is no, we're not going to back out. This is our job, and that's what we're going to continue to do to meet our commitment. Even the head of the Indian Space Agency, ISRO, which has zero involvement in the Starliner CFT mission, was asked to comment on the situation given the interest in the country linked to Williams and her Indian heritage. Getting stranded or stuck in a place is not a narrative that we must have in a moment, as Samant said. The question today when we develop a spacecraft like the Starliner should be whether it can operate reliably for onward and return journeys. This, I believe, is what agencies concerned are thinking. However, the issues might mean that Starliner will not be ready as previously planned for the first crew rotation mission to the station, Starliner 1, in early 2025. NASA had anticipated that when Starliner was preparing for launch in May, it would have a certified vehicle in November to carry out those missions, alternating with SpaceX. Stitch stated that during the call that certification would take longer than expected, but didn't say that Starliner would not be certified in time for the early 2025 mission. At some point, NASA is going to have to decide whether or not to continue with those plans or move SpaceX's Crew-10, currently scheduled for a late summer 2025, to an earlier launch in early next year. He mentioned that NASA is working in parallel on both Starliner and Crew-10, giving the agency some schedule flexibility. We can take our time and get through the crew flight test and have the vehicle return with Butch and Suni, and then we can make decisions afterwards, he said. We still have time. But as many recent recommendations suggest, NASA and Boeing should choose Dragon as the backup vehicle if Starliner's condition deteriorates in the future. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.